Life insurance can be a great financial planning tool, but if you use it the wrong way, it can be a horrible investment. So if you were thinking about getting life insurance, you want to make sure you're doing it the right way and you're going to know how to do that by the end of this video. What's up everybody, I am Jasprit Singh from the MinorityMindset.com and welcome to the Minority Mindset. Investing can be a rabbit hole. At first you think, oh, investing is simple. All you gotta do is just throw your money in the stock market. But then you dig a little bit deeper and that's when you realize, oh, the stock market isn't just stocks. It's stocks, index funds, ETFs, mutual funds, bonds, derivatives, options, futures. When you look at all the different investment options you have, it can be really overwhelming. And somehow every time that happens, you get presented with a simple solution. Just invest your money into life insurance and let your insurance company invest your money for you. They will manage your investments and deal with the markets and you get the returns without the stress. But uh, is life insurance really a good investment? The short answer is no. Insurance is almost never a good investment. But insurance, more specifically life insurance, is very important to every smart financial planner, which is why you need to use it the right way, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. But before we get into that, hit that thumbs up button below because if you don't, then uh, YouTube doesn't share our video with anybody else. Life insurance companies are not going to like me for saying this, but if you ask most life insurance companies, is life insurance a good investment? Almost every single company is gonna say yes, life insurance is one of the best investments you can make. If you ask a seasoned investor, they'll tell you the exact opposite. No, you can beat your insurance company's returns. Let me start by clarifying what I mean by investment. An investment is something where you put your money into this thing and it's supposed to give you a return on your money over the long run and the longer you invest your money, the more money you'll make. Now, of course, investing has risks. You're never guaranteed to make money, but that's the goal with an investment. Life insurance works the other way around. It gives you better returns in the short run, not the long run. The way life insurance works is you're gonna pay money to your insurance company and when you die, your insurance company is going to give you a big check. So let's say you're paying your insurance company $100 a month and when you die, your insurance company is supposed to pay you a million dollars. If you die two months into your contract, your insurance company is going to give you a million dollars although you've only paid them $200. But if you've been doing this for 30 or 40 years, now you're going to get a lower return because you've been investing a whole lot more money or paying a whole lot more money to your insurance company and now they have to pay you a million dollars. What insurance companies do is they take the money that you give them every single month and then they invest this money into bonds and stocks and then they estimate, okay, how long do you have to live? And based on that, they can calculate how much money they're going to make in the markets and they're going to give you a piece of their profits or returns. If you die sooner than expected, then your family makes more money. If you live longer than expected, then your insurance company makes more money and they can calculate on average how long people are going to live. Now, obviously, your life is way more important than money. I just want you to understand how this works financially because in the insurance world, you get the best return or your family gets the best return if you die young. I want an investment that's going to be on my side and win with me where the longer I invest, the better my returns are going to be. It doesn't work like that with insurance. You're going to invest this money into your insurance company and then your insurance company is going to invest this money into the markets and then your insurance company is going to have to pay their company fees. They're going to have to pay for rent. They're going to have to pay their salespeople. They're going to have to pay their money managers. And then after they pay all their fees, that is what you are left over with. These fees can eat away at your returns, but you can invest in very similar ETFs or funds in the market and get the same returns that your insurance company is getting without the fees. This way you can keep the money yourself. However, this only works if you do one thing, if you are disciplined with your money, because if you are not disciplined with your money, then you are not going to be consistent with your investments. And at this point, yeah, okay, you can get better returns investing your money yourself, but you are not investing your money yourself. That's the real advantage with insurance. You're almost forced to invest your money. But if you're disciplined and you can keep up with your investments, then you can get a better return by investing your money yourself. Again, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't have any sort of life insurance. This means you shouldn't treat your life insurance like an investment. Like I recommend everybody who has a family or people relying on them financially to have at the very least some sort of term life insurance to protect 
protect their family. Term life insurance is where you buy life insurance for a certain number of years. It might be 10 years, it might be 40 years, but this is the time where you get risk protection from your life insurance, but at the same time, you are investing your money aggressively so you can build your wealth. This way you don't have to rely on your insurance company to survive. Now, with this type of term life insurance, if you were to die during the term of your life insurance policy, during the 10 years or 40 years or whatever you buy while you're building your wealth, if you were to die during that time, your life insurance company would come in and they would give your family a big check, something like a million dollars or whatever you decide. Now, you're not treating your term life insurance as an investment. You're treating it as a risk management strategy because it's just there for that 10 years or 40 years or whatever, so you can build your wealth because you're investing your money outside of your insurance, but that life insurance is there to protect you in case case of a tragedy. The reason this type of risk protection is so important is because right now, your family is relying on your income to survive. So if something unexpected happened and your income went away, what would your family do? If you already have that wealth and you have those investments there that will take care of your family, then you're fine. You don't need life insurance. You already put in that work and that money and that effort to build that wealth that would take care of your family for years into the future without you being there. But if you don't have that wealth and those investments already built, that's where you need term life insurance, kind of like as that bridge to protect you and your family as you are building your wealth. The reason I call term life insurance a bridge as you're building your wealth is because term life insurance insurance is cheap enough that you can buy it and continue to invest like normal. If you are a healthy 30 year old guy, you can buy a million dollar life insurance policy for less than a dollar a day, for less than $30 a month. If you are a healthy 40 year old guy, you can buy the same $1 million policy for less than $40 a month. Now what you're doing is you're spending a little bit of money every month to buy this risk protection to protect you and to protect your family from a tragedy happening. That way if something horrible were to happen, your family would be okay financially, but at the same time, you are investing your money aggressively. This way you can build your wealth, build your investments. That way you don't have to rely on insurance to survive. If you're wondering how you can get the best deal on life insurance, I recommend you use a free online service like our sponsor Policy Genius because Policy Genius will do the work to find you different quotes from different insurers and it's at no cost to you. All you have to do is go onto their website, enter in a few pieces of information, which just takes a few minutes, and then they will provide provide you different life insurance quotes from different insurers. That way you can make sure you're getting the lowest price possible. I like Policy Genius because they stand by what they do. If you go out and you can find a cheaper term life insurance quote anywhere else, they will pay you $100 for wasting your time. And because of everything going on in the world right now, Policy Genius actually created their own exclusive life insurance plan where you can complete your medical requirements right over the phone and you don't have to pay any sort of premiums to do that. So if you want to learn more about life insurance and see how much it would cost you with a free quote, I got the link to where you can do that with Policy Genius in the description below. Minority Mindset is a partner with Policy Genius, so if you use them, we will get compensated, but there's no additional cost to you. I mean, the service is completely free for you to use. So if you want to learn more and get a free quote, I got the link to where you can do that in the description below. The difference between getting a term life insurance policy, investing the rest of your money, and having your insurance company invest your money is the returns that you're gonna get and who invests your money. Going back to our previous example, if you are a healthy 30 year old guy and you want a $1 million life insurance policy and you want your insurance company to invest your money for you, you're gonna need some sort of whole life insurance policy and this will cost you something like $800 a month. So let's do some math. Let's assume that you're very disciplined with your money and you take this $30 a month and you use this to buy term life insurance and now you take this other $770 a month and you invest this money yourself. And to keep things simple, you're just going to throw this money into the stock market. We're going to keep things simple. You're not trying to pick stocks or find the next Amazon. You're just going to put your money into an ETF or index fund that just matches the stock market. So you're not trying to beat the stock market. You're just trying to grow your money with the stock market. Over the long run, the stock market has gone up historically by about 10% a year. So if you have an investment account worth $0 right now, and you start investing $770 a month into your investment account every single month, and it just grows at 10% a year, you will have a million dollar investment account by the time you are 55 years old. That's just 25 years from today. If you invest that money into your life insurance account, well, your family isn't gonna get a million dollar check until you die, and in America, 
the life expectancy for a male right now is 78 years. So that's 48 years from today. Hopefully you live a lot longer than that, but that's what insurance companies do. They just look at how old you are today, and they look at the life expectancy, they look at your health, and then they estimate how long you're gonna live. Looking at the numbers, it looks like it will take your insurance company 48 years before they give your family that million dollar check. Again, if you die sooner, then you'll get that million dollars sooner, or your family will get that million dollars sooner. But uh, I don't think any of you want that. But this is where things get really interesting. Because if you invested that $770 a month into your own investment account, and you got that average 10% return a year, you would have a million dollar account by the time you're 55. But if you kept investing until you turned 78, which is what, 48 years from now? Well, if you did that, you invested $770 a month, every month, from the day you turned 30 until the day you turned 78, you wouldn't have a $1 million investment account or a $2 million investment account. You would have an investment account worth over $9 million that you'd be able to pass on to your kids or whoever you want. That's the power of financial education. Again, this is only possible if you are disciplined with your money. If you cannot consistently invest your money or you don't think you can do that, then by all means, invest your money with your insurance company because some return is better than no return. Turn. This is where insurance companies come in and they'll say things like, well, you could take out a loan against your insurance policy or you can get a dividend on your insurance policy. But again, if you are a seasoned investor, you know that, okay, if I invest my money myself, I can get the same dividends, maybe even better ones, and I can use my money however I want. So if you have that financial education, you can use your money better. But if you don't have that financial education and you don't care about getting it, then yeah, some return is better than no return. Let me make sure this is also clear. If you outlive your term life insurance policy, like you buy a 40 year policy and then you live for another 50 years, well, then your insurance company is going to give you nothing because you outlived your term life insurance policy. But you have to remember, you didn't buy your term life insurance policy as an investment. You bought it as a risk management strategy to protect you during the term of that policy because during that term, that's where you're gonna be building your wealth. It's just like car insurance. If you don't get into an accident, your car insurance company isn't gonna give you your money back. It's there to protect you from a worst case scenario type of situation. Insurance companies make a lot of money charging you fees to invest your money year after year after year. With the right financial education, you can avoid Avoid those fees, invest your money, get the same returns, and if you really want, you can invest your money into insurance companies. That way, as they make more money, so do you. This is what financial education is all about. And if you're looking for an easy way to up your financial education, you can subscribe to the Minority Mindset newsletter, and you can read our free ebook on money management and investing for free when you sign up for our financial education emails, which are also free. You can get our free ebook and our financial education emails by clicking the link up here or by clicking the link in the description below. By the way, our financial education emails are separate from our financial news emails. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, share it with one friend. That way we can help spread the word. If you want to learn more about some of the biggest lies surrounding life insurance, I already made a video on it. And you can watch this video on YouTube by clicking this button right over here. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep hustling.